welcome to Quinlan. I'm Keith Gosland. I'm Ann Charles. Welcome to All Things LGBTQ. It's Tuesday, March 26th, and we have a lot of news for you today, starting with Linda. Hi. Linda, oh, your hi. news. <laughs> <laughs> I'm news. Uh, uh. Well, I have, uh, I'm going to do the headlines, but I have a little something on Barbara Streisand, which people have probably heard about. And Alabama lawmakers unanimously vote to stop issuing marriage licenses so that gay couples can't get them. If the bill is signed into law, Alabama will be the only state where a marriage license would not be required. You could still get married. So what does it matter? I don't get that, you know? So they're saying you could have a religious commitment ceremony, but you don't get a civil license? I guess. That's my understanding. Yeah, okay. but nobody can, no one can get married. Nobody, I know, so it's okay. ridiculous. Well, I don't think you could even get married in the church without a license, right? Sure you can. Sure. Can you? Uh, yeah, oh, because yeah. Oh, okay. they have to sign off as an officiant recognized by the state. Yeah. Oh, okay. Back to the headlines. Okay. Then there's Roseanne Barr. LGBT groups want Mayor Pete to be more than gay candidate for president, so we'll talk a little about that. Um, and Ann will pronounce his last name for everybody. Oh, I've got that down. T uh, Tennessee advances anti-LGBTQ license to discriminate. The House approved a bill which will now go into the Senate. The bill would mean that the states and cities could require companies they do business with to have non-discrimination policy so this is Tennessee yeah they can't have, um, so and then at New York City LGBTQ Center cancels an event hosted by right-wing queer group Iowa Congressman Steve King uh, yeah I know uh, United Airlines will now offer non-binary options for passengers Democrats in West Virginia called on represent uh, Republican delegate delegate Eric Porterfield to resign after he made anti-LGBTQ remarks, but instead Mr. Field doubled down by going on television in West Virginia news program saying that he would drown his kids if they were gay. Mm. Gay kid governor, boxer threatens to punch or shoot any gay man that flirts with him. San Antonio airport bans Chick-fil-A. <laughs> All right. Well, there's From a doing victory. business at their airport because of their anti-LGBTQ agenda. That's a long-standing agenda. That's I thought it was the quality years. of their food. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Lots of people love it. I'm a vegetarian. You get French fries. No. Dance studio turns away a lesbian couple. NAACP endorses LGBTQ Equality Act. Michigan bars LGBTQ discrimination in state adoptions. Faith-based agencies, if funded in any part by the state, will no longer be able to turn away gay couples. Homophobic flyers target lesbian mayoral candidate Lori Lightfoot. The flyers were put on cars around black churches. This was Chicago. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Colorado bans ex-gay Conversion therapy. The bill would also make advertising conversion therapy a deceptive trade practice, which is good. And lastly, Bernie Sanders has a transgender flag outside of his Washington, D.C. office. So. And I've seen the picture. So, first, some local events. Monday, April 1st, is Women's Game Night at the Pride Center. 5.45 p.m. I'm not going to make a comment that it's April 1st. <laughs> and also, and there's a Momentum meeting April 1st. Oh, that wasn't on the website. Yeah. Okay. Tuesday, April 2nd, Central Vermont Trans Social Group, 7 o'clock, Episcopal Church here in town. Wednesday, April 3rd. We're busy. <laughs> it's a busy week for us. <laughs> Pride Center, 4.30, People with Disabilities Group. And on Saturday, April 6th, talking about someone 
being the news. Yes. Mm -hmm. Kellogg Hopper Library, LGBTQ Poets Speak, A Poet City Reading, 12 Noon, Allison Prime, Jay Turk, Toussaint, who we have interviewed on this show, and perhaps Linda Quinlan. Yes. Organizer. Soon, soon to be published author. Yes. Great. <laughs> so then looking at regional stuff, Maine, there's a little change in attitude. Yeah. It's no longer your LePage Augusta anymore. Uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about that. Um, in Vermont, crossover, what did or didn't make it through. And then an update on the Beto Sanchez Perez, who was taken into custody in December, mm -hmm. and a little bit about the background and what was going on. This week's trivia question, and, and they kind of sort of got it. March 1988, lead story in Out in the Mountains. They were reporting on yet another public hearing on S-278, a bill to prohibit discrimination on the basis of sexual or affectional orientation. Over 700 people attended. 215 people testified, 85 supporting, 120 opposing. The hearing lasted from, and those of us who have been around remember this, from 7 p.m. until Senate Judiciary Chair closed the hearing at 1 in the morning. We were the lead story on the 11 o'clock news, and we were still testifying. Opposition, they came by busloads, and they were predominantly representing fundamentalist communities. Were they busloads of people from Vermont or from other places? Oh, they were from Vermont. Okay. And, I, and I'm not going to tell you. Because sometimes they bus in people who aren't. Oh, no. This, this was not about Operation Rescue, where they would go into the homeless shelters and say, oh, we'll pay you to, to come to Vermont to demonstrate, right. be incarcerated, and we will take care of you. No, this was, you know, Christian Broadcast had put out that this hearing was happening. Okay. They piled onto the buses and came, some from not that far away. Mm -hmm. uh, there are some separatist communities in our backyards. Most of the people who testified carried their Bibles with them when they Aww. went up to the table. Aww. There was one person, and this was their testimony. It is well documented and well known that the typical gay has 500 to 1,000 in their lifetime. <laughs> and, and the question is, 500 to 1,000 what? <laughs> and just as an aside, Tuesday, March 26th, write this on your calendar, we've been waiting for our next woman governor. Mm -hmm. Phil Scott is out of state, as is Lieutenant Governor David Zuckerman. Oh. So that makes Speaker of the House Mitzi Johnson, the acting governor. All right. Governor for a day. There you go. Well, may I add to your announcements? I'd like if to you must. I'd like, <laughs> I'd like to embellish on yeah, one of them. Yeah, go for it. Which one? Momentum planning meeting, Monday, April 1st, 6 to 7.30. And Momentum is a LGBT group for folks over 40. Okay, and where is at that? At the Pride is Center. Is that the Pride Center? Okay. And then there's another. They're going to compete with Women's Game Night? They're all going to be I say there you take at them. the same time. <laughs> I see you take them. Yeah, I didn't see it. That could be the game. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and then the, I'll, I'll, another announcement, if I may. On She's Sunday, on a roll. So. I know it. On Sunday, March 31st at 6 at the Pride Center, um, LGBTQ Family Dinner, Trans Day of Visibility. Oh. You're okay. invited to a fabulous potluck. At your Not you particularly. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to say, I have a conflict because I'm going to be at the Flynn seeing the ballet Trucadero. Oh. oh. Yeah. <laughs> I may go to the Momentum meeting. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> okay. So just to add your thank, announcement. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to. Yeah, there you go. All right. Now. You're irrepressible. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's move to my headlines if we can. They are as follows. Six LGBT moments cut from Bohemian Rhapsody in China. Now, we mentioned last time they cut out Rami Malek's mention of uh, Freddie Mercury being gay, but they've gone further, those censors in China. And my question was, who didn't Why know? show the movie at all if you're going to cut out half the movie? I mean, it's ridiculous. Well, uh, I will um, 
So elaborate we'll explore right there. it more deeply. Okay. That's right. Um, next headline. <laughs> Win for Kenyan gays as court upholds their right to form an organization, an NGO. India's first LGBTQ theater group called Q-Rang launched at the Kerala Queer Pride March, and it was also the first Pride March in Kerala. So a lot of ground being broken there. Rainbow Rage, Kirzich, rail against LGBT community after Central Asia's first gay pride march. And this gay pride march was also a women's march on International Women's Day. Oh. So last time I reported that Malaysia's women's march incurred um, opprobrium because it included LGBT people. Same thing now here in Kyrgyzstan. Homophobic arsonists torch an HIV testing center in Athens. Oh, that was awful. And I have a picture of the torch center. It was, it's called Checkpoint. It's in the middle of Athens. Um, there was an outcry afterwards, but this was almost an anniversary, a six-month anniversary of that murder in Athens of that gay guy that I told you about. So we may get back to that. We're not going to Athens. Mm. Brunei, let's not go there either, urged to halt the introduction of a strict new and anti-LGBT series of laws. They're just awful. World's happiest countries protect their LGBTQ citizens. Japanese pro soccer player comes out as gay and encourages others to do the same prior to the 2020 Olympics. And I have a picture before you of her. Her name is Shino Shimo Yamada, and she's 24. I'm very happy to have come out. My last headline, which will be accompanied by a clip, uh -oh. concerns the island. Penguins? Oh, what's that? Penguins? No, penguins. <laughs> but, you know, a little um, talking to, to the U.S. from Irish Prime Minister oh. Leo Vradikar. He meets deplorable Mike Pence. There was a whole awkward arrangement. With his partner, right? His yeah. partner and Pence's wife, deplorables both. You know, they had this awkwardly staged <laughs> interaction. And then uh, Vrata- Did they go to dinner with him or something? Well, anyway, go ahead. Vradikar made a speech that can be viewed as a rebuke of Mike Pence, and I think it should be. so. Let's look at that speech now. Uh, I stand here, leader of my country, flawed and human, but judged by my political actions and not by my sexual orientation, my skin tone, gender or religious beliefs. And I don't believe that my country is the only one in the world where this story is possible. It's found in every country where freedom and liberty are cherished. We are, after all, all God's children. And that's true of the United States as well, the land and home of the brave and the free, where the promise of America inspires boys and girls all over the world to dream big dreams and inspires others around the world to do the same. Well, well. Yeah, when, when he said we're all children of God, I thought this is a rebuke, a rebuke to Mike Pence's homophobic yeah. evangelism yeah. and religious stance so I love the accent well and the partner in this scene was like what am I doing here <laughs> they were making small talk the pences and he was like ooh can I throw my tater tots at them <laughs> <laughs> all right I would feel the same way if I was there I know it like, uh, you'd wing the mashed potatoes thing. Right. Oh. okay what you got now we have you know Barbara Streisand Who's lost her mind? I know, who alleged the sex abuse victims were thrilled to be there. Uh, however... At Neverland. Later, she yeah. said that she feels deep remorse yeah. and hope James and Wade know that they are truly respect and admire them for speaking their truth. To be crystal clear, there is no situation or circumstance where it is okay for the innocence of children to be taken advantage of by anyone. Streisand's statement reads, the stories these two young men shared were painful to hear 
and I feel nothing but sympathy for them. The single most important role of being a parent is protect their children. It's clear that the parents of these two young men were also victimized and seduced by fame and yeah. fantasy. So, you know, but her initial statement was just horrible, and I... She I, said, I guess they lived through it. They both have yeah, kids, and... Yeah, yeah. I, I just, mm. you know, like, I, this I just lost... This is when I snap my teeth. I lost a lot of respect for Barbara doing this. It was well, terrible. It, it's also a concept that most people don't understand, and it's grooming. It wasn't as though these two young men were invited to Neverland. I and, know. And immediately... There was he seduced that the was parents. Occurring. It is a gradual process. Right. You know, how can I get you used to what it is that I'm about to do so that you accept it, and when I say you need to be silent, you are going to protect me. That's grooming. Yeah. That takes time. Yeah. And, and he had yeah. money, and he could offer poor parents, you know, yeah. Yeah. trips around the world. And, you know, so, but the fact that you used the word thrilled, uh, you know, having to do with his music was just kind of uh Well, and one of my friends on Facebook said, bad move, Babs. Yeah. Yeah. So she's mm -hmm. going to have to do a lot of backtracking uh, on that. Um, and then Roseanne Barr, um, you know, Sarah Gilbert is the young woman who was also a lesbian, who was a lesbian, mm -hmm. not also, who was a lesbian on the show. Anyways, Roseanne Barr says that she's never going to be able to forgive her for destroying her life after Roseanne's racist tweet. Gilbert joined the chorus of Americans condemning her tweet. As we recall, Ro Roseanne posted a racist tweet about Valerie Jarrett, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A an African-American woman who was a senior advisor to Barack Obama throughout his presidency and considered one of the most influential aides. Roseanne wrote that if the Muslim Brotherhood and Planet of the Apes had a baby, Valerie would be it. So, and so how is I, she's mad at Sarah Gilbert because she joined the chorus of condemnation? Right, and she yeah. felt like that she should have had her support. And also, Wanda Sykes walked off the job uh, when she, she was said this she too. Was an yeah, advisor, she was a writer and, and advisor. So, mm. um, and it, it's, it's not as though Sarah Gilbert took Roseanne's cell phone and was. Creating yeah, tweets, yeah. but you know, I guess you expected her. But to I be. distract you. Yes, <laughs> but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and um, then there's the LBGT groups want Mayor Pete, boot the judge, yeah, to be more than the gay candidate for president. I really like him, and I've heard him talk, and I heard him at a town meeting, and he's just fantastic. But. Um, He's a Midwestern mayor, has a Harvard diploma, and he speaks about eight languages. Uh, and he was also deployed in Afghanistan. Now that he's crossed the 65,000 donor threshold imposed by the DNC, he can be in the debates. Why do they have a limit to how much, you have to have so much money before you can speak, I don't know. They, they use the contributions as an indication of support from within the Democratic Party, and once you reach a specific plateau, then you're looked at being a viable candidate. I know, I understand I, why they do it, but I mean. The fact that it's attached to money is sort weird. of promotes the you know problems that we're the having with campaign yeah. financing and yeah. Don't get Anne going on corporate sponsorship. I know. Right. We won't even go there. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking, money, money, what was that song? Money, 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 money from money, Cabaret. Cabaret. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly yeah. what was going through my head. He is trying to break the rainbow ceiling. We want him, though, to show that, more, that he deserves to be in the arena, says Denise, Denise Parker, president of the LGBTQ Victory Fund. We are excited about his candidacy. He has put emphasis on his generation college affordability, economic equality, and fighting climate change. I think this is going to be like, I mean, once people get to know him, I think he's going to be very popular. Whether we could elect a gay uh, president of the United Why States, not? I don't know. But he's very intriguing. So, um, And so let's hear what you have to say now. 
maybe dating opportunities. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so the first thing is an update on Beto Sanchez Torres, and to sort of recap really quickly, Beto is someone who had been working with the Pride Center and was an immigrant, specifically doing outreach to LGBTQ migrant workers. Mm -hmm. And he had his traffic stop, for which he then had a court appearance. And when he showed up in December in Burlington for the court appearance, ICE was waiting for him when he exited the courthouse, even though the hearing had nothing to do with his immigration status. And even though it was not a felony, which is supposed to be the two components that would trigger. Did someone turn they, him in? No, no. No, what happens is that when you show up on the court roster, that goes into ICDC, it goes into the National right. Crime Computer, to which ICE does have access. Mm -hmm. So okay. they, you know, they were able to grab out his name, match it against their list. They took him into custody, and it had been really unclear what was going on, but he has been held in a detention center outside of Boston since December. And he, the report last night was that he had finally, after many delays, had his hearing after being in the orange jumpsuit in handcuffs and waiting in the courtroom all day. And reportedly, he has been granted asylum. He's been what? Granted asylum, oh, good. which is a positive thing. So we will have more on future shows. Maine, I guess it's not LePage's Augusta anymore. Yeah. Although he's Governor still speaking. <laughs> doesn't mean we have to listen, I know. and, Susan and it Collins. doesn't mean that it has weight. Well, Susan Collins is a different issue. <laughs> Governor Mills signed LD1 into law. This was an act to protect health care coverage for Maine families. Yeah. It was done as an emergency act, which meant it got two-thirds vote in both their House and the Senate. And what this does is that it codifies the Affordable Care Act into Maine statutes so that regardless of what happens on the federal level, They've got coverage. And why it's important to us is this is what is going to ensure that people who are HIV positive or identify as transgender, insurance companies cannot come in and just artificially inflate your premiums. What about pre there to be pre physicians? That's, well, see, that's the catch with the Affordable Care Act is that an insurance company cannot do an adverse rating on you because of pre-existing conditions, right. they have to accept it. Although that's going through the courts, too. That's a whole different thing. I what, know. what this means is that regardless of what 45 is able to do in the federal courts, relative to repeal of the Affordable Care Maine. Act, Maine has their protections okay. in place. The other thing, they just introduced LD 1025. This would be a ban on the use of conversion therapy. Good. It passed during the last session. The LePage vetoed it. There was not enough time to do an override of his veto, nor did they really have the votes in the chamber to do it. But it's been reintroduced. And looking at the number of sponsors, they already have more sponsors than would be needed to vote in favor of the bill. <laughs> so my guess is that we're going to be looking at a ban on conversion therapy in Maine in the very near Good. future. May I ask you a question about Vermont? Can Vermont ever pass a bill like that with the with health care? We have already any, we have an insurance parity. Yeah, where Vermont already has in place all of the necessary protections, and it's actually one of the bills that the House Health Care Committee, which is the the committee for which Bill Lippert is the chair, voted out so that it would make crossover to ensure that all of those protections are in place. Good. That's encouraging. Now it's to you. Okay, let's go back to Bohemian Rhapsody, if we may. Um, it opened in China on March 22nd. And as we know, um, it portrays the life of Queen frontman Freddie Mercury, uh, an LGBT icon who died of AIDS-related illnesses at the age of 45. Um, Chinese censors in 2016 banned the portrayal of abnormal, in their view, sexual behavior, including gay and lesbian relationships in TV and online and in online shows. Consequently, some members of the LGBT community have called the release of Bohemian Rhapsody in China a victory. However, 
the China, Chinese documentary filmmaker and LGBT activist Fan Popo said it was dangerous to review the release of the to view the release of the film, which has grossed over eight hundred ninety million dollars at right. the global box office as a win. If everyone becomes content with this kind of victory, then the whole world yeah. will always submit to authority. Mm -hmm. Creators won't be respected, and there will be no protection for the interests of the audience. Here are six LGBT moments in the film, which I have not seen, but I'm hoping this will be of interest, of general interest. Six uh, moments that have been um, censored for the world's second largest movie market. Number one, a close-up of a male crotch. <laughs> Number two, a kiss between male, I can tell you, give you more context, but let's just go through it quickly. A kiss between male characters. Mercury is confronted over his sexuality. Um, his longtime lover and friend Mary um, talks to him about his sexuality. He says, I'm bisexual, and she says, no, Freddie, you're gay. They took that out. The word gay is removed in another scene. Um, somebody says about Mercury's new haircut, gayer. In the Chinese version, he's only shown, given Mercury's new haircut, a skeptical look before the scene moves on. A plot hole emerges. Just after the one hour mark in the original version, a drunk Mercury gropes his future partner, Jim, who was working at, as a server at the party the star had just hosted. The scene is deleted in the Chinese release, leaving a plot hole as viewers have no idea where Jin came from. A passionate kiss between both men later is also gone. The entire I want to break free scene is gone. Now you may wonder if you haven't seen the movie what scene this is. <laughs> it's Freddie Mercury gets dressed up in women's clothing to shoot the now legendary music video of I want to be free. The Chinese release skips this and cuts to Queen's heated reaction to MTV banning the music video, which viewers might find confusing, I would think so. Yes. What stayed in during a press conference, even though Mercury was asked directly about his sexual orientation, the term used by the reporter was translated as sex life in the Chinese subtitle, changing the question's meaning entirely. Despite the cuts and mistranslation, the average Chinese viewer can still infer Mercury's sexuality. Scenes that made the final version include Mercury coming out to his parents by holding the hand of his partner, Jim Hutton. <coughs> Homosexuality is not illegal in China, and the authorities in 200, 2001 removed it from the official list of med medical, mental disorders. But activists and experts agree that prejudices and discrimination as well as periodic government crackdowns persist. Instead of trying to eliminate LGBT themes within the film, filmmaker Fan said the censors have honed in on its more explicit sexual elements. Rather than homophobic, I think China's censors are sexphobic, he said. They are probably the most conservative Agreed. people in China. That's why they are chosen for this job. Still, Fan does not believe the release of Bohemian Rhapsody in China represents a loosening of the censor censorship of LGBT content. I think that China has recently been trying, trying to present itself to the world as open-minded. CNN has reached out to the office of 20th Century Fox uh, for comment, and they didn't comment. So, I bet they can get on the black market or whatever that is. I bet they could get like videos, the real thing, don't you think? I don't know. I want to say movie? that the American companies like Netflix, Amazon Prime, et cetera, Amazon Video, have been going along with the Chinese censorship and not making them available. So. Yeah, I can't okay. answer that. I don't know about the black market in China. 
But I can tell you about the win for Kenyan gays as the court upholds their right to form an organization. Eric Jatari, and I have a picture of him before you right now. He's approached the NGO Coordination Board after seeking to register his NGO. After his application was rejected, he went to the High Court. He's co-founder of the National Gay and Lesbian Human Rights Commission in Kenya. Three justices affirmed the decision of the High Court and said that all human beings should not be denied their fundamental rights because of how they choose to live their life. The presiding judge said there's nothing lawful, unlawful and criminal about the objectives of the proposed NGO. The issue of LGBT is rarely discussed in public, but it cannot be doubted that it is an emotive issue, this uh, judge said. The reality is that this group exists and we can no longer deny that. Let it go down that I will not be the first to throw a stone and harm them, <laughs> he said. According to the court documents, Gitari, well, you know, it's not a happy atmosphere in Kenya, generally. Yeah. Uh, according to court documents, Gitari had approached the NGO Coordination Board seeking to register as NGO. The core objectives of the proposed organizations, according to Gitari, is advancement of human rights. Specifically, the proposed NGO would seek to address the violence and human rights abuses suffered by gay and lesbian people. As we observed above, our understanding of the objectives of the proposed NGO is the protection of persons whose sexual orientation is gay or lesbian, as well as persons who are transgender or intersex from discrimination and other violation of their rights, the bench said. Mm. So. What does uh, NGO stand for? Non-governmental organization. Okay. And that could be anything like yeah, but they any it, social service thing or right, okay. but it needs to be approved. Yeah. Let's <laughs> talk about India's first LGBT <laughs> theater group, Q Rang, and the Kerala Queer Pride March. <laughs> now, I have a picture before you of the Queer Pride in Kerala, held on March seventeenth, twenty nineteen, St. Patrick's Day. The Pride March. Um, launched India's first ever LGBTQ theater group, Q Rang, toward the close of the event. Are they going to do like a theater that's already been established, or are they going to think up their own, or are they just? I don't know. I, you know, right. I don't know. They just had their first performance. Um, among the programs announced at the end of the march also include the launch of Joala, a self-help group created for the transgender community. Uh, according to an organization working for the rights of sexual and gender minorities, the turnout this time was unexpectedly large. And um, this spokesperson was pleasantly surprised to see people pouring in from other states like Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, and West Bengal. The march had followed a green protocol in this edition, the report added. None of the materials we used are non-biodegradable. Non, are non the rainbow flags are all made of cotton or cotton mixed material. Several cultural events followed after it drew to a close, including a performance by the theater group, of which I just spoke. This is the first queer pride in Kerala after the de decriminalization of Section 377 of the India Penal Code in September 2018, a colonial law under which homosexuality was a criminal offense. Now, I can go on to Kyrgyzstan. No, I think we should move down this way, and then when we get to you, you can go back carry to on. Okay. Okay. All right. We have Iowa Congressman Steve King. A deplorable. We all, a deplorable. Well, he had something fun happen. Well, he didn't think it was fun, but I kind of thought it was interesting. He was questioned uh, why white nationalism had a negative connotation. Well, he had a glass of water thrown at him during a lunch on Friday. 
26 year old adoptee advocate rights activist Blake Gibbons was arrested and charged. Police believe Gibbons targeted King for his racist, anti immigrant, anti LGBTQ, and Islamophobic statements. Just this week, King said victims of Hurricane Katrina expected the government to come and bail them out and help them, as opposed to Iowans who's recovering from recent floods. Ooh. I know. So here's the other thing. There is a GoFundMe set up for Gibbons to help him with his legal expenses. So if you want to go help Gibbons with his legal I, offenses, uh, go to his GoFundMe and help him out. <laughs> I, I just, duh. I, I know. Okay. Okay. I know. You know what that it was means? like that guy who egged what, that guy? egg boy in Australia. Egg boy, yeah. That Australian deplorable <laughs> who was blaming the Muslims for the Christchurch massacre, yeah. and this young they man egged him. Yeah, <laughs> broke that an egg good. on his head. All righty. All right. Um, gay kid governor. This is kind of a really neat thing. You have a picture. Um, of I that? have a picture. Yeah, of uh, this uh, young girl, and says she's going to be the next. She's going to be the first lesbian president, I believe her. Fifth grader Ellie Briggs, who was bullied at her old school, ran on a pro-LGBTQ rights platform. Since 2015, <clears throat> this would be a good thing for any state, I would think, uh, Connecticut has ran, run a state-run state civics program that encourages fifth graders to run for election for president vote and she was voted kid governor this 11 year old was sworn in as the kid governor at the state house and she is just adorable and so she's not really going to be the governor no she's a kid governor not yet <laughs> i see <Kids> that, <laughs> yeah. that's the idea of the story, so the, huh? the idea of the civics is to have these kids run and make a platform and take a stand and argue their issues and um, and she won so and she's going to be the first boxer threatens to punch or shoot any gay man that flirts with him so apparently these two have been having this <laughs> the target of this anger is Adrian Bro A Adrian Broner's hate-filled video because an ex-gay man accused the boxer of coming on to him. So he did this video and uh, said that uh, he wouldn't, f he wasn't flirting. In fact, he would shoot. He would shoot him, yeah, so. Or uh, excessive response. Yeah, yeah. And dance studio turns away lesbian couple. The owner said he didn't want them to come because it would make people uncomfortable. Because they dance better than the rest? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are they suing? <laughs> well, I don't know. What state was this in? Uh, We're just peppering her with questions. I know. No. I can't read. I don't know, and I didn't Because didn't if there say. was not a public accommodations, non-discrimination. Texas, maybe. Michelle they, King they can get away with it. and Amanda Sheldon were turned away from the prestige ball. Oh, this is where it was from the Prestige Ballroom in Des Perez, Missouri by Dave Thompson, who allegedly told them that he doesn't have to accommodate same-sex couples, mm -hmm. though, and that he is freely, a freely admit, oh, he said he didn't have to because it wasn't required by law. However, it is required by law. But he said that he didn't have, a, he didn't do it for religious reasons. But if he had done it for religious reasons, he would have had a way to throw them out. Missouri has non-discrimination statutes in place? Maybe in this town. I don't know. But it turns out that if he had said it was religious. Professor he, Charles, homework assignment. <laughs> <right>? <laughs> no. Okay. I know. If he said it was religious, he would have been legitimately thrown them out. But he said it wasn't religiously based, so he had to take them. So I don't know. He took them? No. He didn't. Well, I don't know what the outcome was. I know that someone else called and said, well, you're welcome at my dance place, but I don't okay, know what they did. Okay, that was probably the outcome. So we'll have to catch up with them at some point. <coughs> and
And um, I think that's pretty much what I have here for so, me. So, so let me add to your national yes, stuff. Do. At, as we were coming down, it was announced that Jesse Smollett right. in Chicago, they've dropped all 16 charges. What the prosecutor had said was that the volunteer service that the young man is already providing and his willingness to forfeit the bond would equate to what would be the fines and penalties if they went through the hearing. So they've dropped all 16 charges. Neither the mayor nor the chief of police kind of like this agreement and they've been very vocal in opposition. April 2nd, U.S. House of Representatives will have the first public hearing ever on the Equality Act, which means non-discrimination based upon mm -hmm. sexual orientation, gender identity. And there was a recent poll, not taking you to Poland, <laughs> <laughs> looking at sort of the level of support for LGBTQ issues. And they found that still 69% of Americans support LGBT equality. However, that's a 2 to 3% decrease from two year, three years ago, major shift within the re people who self-identify as Republicans. In Vermont, looking at those things that passed crossover, which means there will be action completed this year, paid family leave. And this would add half a cent payroll tax. And people who earn 1334 per hour or less they would qualify for 90% of their salary. Mm. And people who earned greater than 1334, which is considered the livable wage, um, would get 50% of their salary. And what the bill would give you is 12 weeks of parental leave and eight weeks of medical leave. Huh. So it, was, it, was, it is no longer the most generous program in the nation, but it's doing pretty good. The other bill that is advancing is a 24-hour waiting period on the purchase of a handgun. And this, this bill is a compromise. It is down from the 72 hours that the House had originally wanted, and the House is about to consider it, the 48 hours that was originally proposed in the Senate. They also limited it specifically to handguns. Rifles are exempted, and they remove the... Because of suicide. Right. Well, that's Part the whole the reason, basis yeah. for the bill is you know the parents of a young man who went out, purchased and committed suicide within the same afternoon was saying if, if they had had 48 hours, things would have changed. So, but rifles are now excluded. Uh, they also put in a provision that if I was grandfathered in with high capacity magazines, I could will them to an immediate family member. Not going there. <laughs> PR5, this is, this is one of the constitutional amendments passed by unanimous vote out of the Senate Health and Welfare Committee. There were, two v there were two different constitutional amendments relative to reproductive freedom. One is PR3 and the other is PR5. PR3 was introduced by Senator Benning of Caledonia County and he, what he put into the language of his bill was only what he thought were the core components of Roe v. Wade. And it's about your right mm -hmm. to privacy. PR5 goes further than that. And, and this was introduced originally by Senator Ash and Senator Becca Ballant, <laughs> our next woman governor. Yeah. Um, and they went further, that it's not only a right to privacy, but it is a right a woman's right to choose and is clearly identified. There is no doubt about it. And this would put it at the constitutional level. So regardless of what the US Supreme Court does, We're covered Ver in. Vermont would have it at our highest level. A bill of interest, S-141, soda, mm -hmm. will no longer be considered the default drink on a children's menu. I don't know. I, just fun. And the House had voted to put a four cent per gallon tax f fuel charge, heating fuel, to contribute to the weatherization pro program. 
worthy program. Currently, it is two cents per gallon. They're going to double it to four cents a gallon. Looking at you know for climate change and you know all of the things that we really need to be doing, you know weatherization mm -hmm. for you know low income is probably one of the more effective things that we can do. My only last comment, because we're going to give Ann as much time as possible. What about trivia? And I have uh, two questions for you. Okay. Oh, why didn't you tell me your questions then? <laughs> well, I don't want to interrupt your presentation. <laughs> You know, continue. Well, well, no, the only other thing I was going to say is they released some hate crime statistics looking at 2016, and of the 275 rallies that 45 held, looking at those counties in which the rallies mm -hmm. were held, there was an over 226% increase in the incident of bias and hate crimes characterized by vandalism, intimidation, and assault. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, back to the Equality Act. Is mm -hmm. it true that Mitch McConnell isn't even going to bring it to the Senate? Oh, I haven't heard that. I've heard um, that. That it, that wouldn't necessarily surprise me. No. But. And the PR3 and the PR5, what's happening? Or have they been passed? Or what's going okay. on with them? Okay, PR5. Is the one we want. Which is the one we want will have made it from the Senate to the House by the crossover <coughs> deadline, so it will be enacted this year. Oh, good. oh, Scott will sign it? He doesn't have to. This, and again, constitutional amendment, it has to pass by two-thirds majority in the Senate, simple majority in the House. That has to be completed within the biennium. Then it gets reintroduced the next biennium, which would be 2020, 2021. It would have to be reintroduced in the Senate, passed by simple majority, passed by the House in simple majority, and then it goes out for vote by the citizens. This is not something that the governor signs into law. This is something that we vote on, oh, and it gets in essentially, and it gets enacted as a constitutional amendment. Not oh, until okay. 2021, if all goes well? 22, yeah. Very informative, thank there you. There you go. I have three stories um, to wrap up my segment. One involves this Rainbow Rage story. Um, in the first Gay Pride March slash Women's Day March in Kyrgyzstan, uh, I have a picture before you now of the human rights activists um, marching in this Women's Day March. Um, many consider it the first gay pride march ever held in Central Asia. Uh, it's unleashed a storm of controversy in Kyrgyzstan with threats of violence against participants, counter-protests, and fiery parliamentary debate over whether to rein, rein in civil society. The peaceful march by some 400 people in central Bishkek on Women's Day on March 8th, promoting women's rights and equality Is that for- Is the capital? Yeah, I believe so. Um, and equality for all, it was fiercely criticized by socially conservative lawmakers in the predominantly Muslim country. So there was a big fight in Parliament, and all these deplorables came out and denounced Ugh. LGBT rights and so forth. Um, no women's marches were held in any of the four other Central Asian states. Um, critics say um, such comment, or observers say such comments are emblematic of a deep societal division within Kyrgyzstan, the region's only democracy, and arguably its most progressive country. I think it's very cool that the LGBTQ community came to the march, because this is also related to the rights of women, if we're talking about lesbians and transgender girls who face tremendous violence in Kyrgyzstan, said Baktor Iskander, the founder of the popular Klub KG website and a participant in the march. This is part of the women's rights movement. It's impossible to separate them. And I'm proud of Kyrgyzstan that this has become possible here. 
Iskador, Iskender added that it wasn't the only time that supporters of sexual minorities in Kyrgyzstan had been taking part in the Women's March, only that it was the first time opponents of the LGBT community had noticed. This year's Women's March had more participants than in previous years because there's a group of deplorables called the 40 Warriors. And they made threats to marchers and city officials, allowing the event to be held. Um, Bishkek feminist initiatives insisted on holding the march despite uh, this group's efforts to discourage it, saying that it could, it, the opponents said it could cause traffic jams and lead to confrontations, <laughs> but the feminists prevailed. While there were 40 warrior, Are these legislative people or just like Well, there was a fight in parliament citizens. and a lot of deplo and then this group of 40 warriors caused trouble. Okay. And then city officials were threatened and, the, you know, the 40 warriors said this is going to cause confrontations and traffic jams and the BFD but feminists said we're going to go ahead and do it anyway. Um, there were 40 members, 40, <laughs> there were 40 warrior members present at the march but they didn't directly affair, interfere with the procession. However, they are accused of making threats to female activists and others who attended. Um, 40 warriors called on March 11th for Bishkek mayor to resign for permitting the march, and two days later, the nationalist group held a counter protest in front of parliament, <laughs> warning its members that it and its thousands of supporters would take action if lawmakers did not. Oh. Only about 30 people attended the Nationalist Group rally. Uh, we proposed that 40 warriors rename themselves, this activist said, <laughs> to 40 dickheads. To 30 dickheads, <laughs> sure, I screwed up. To 30 dickheads, because 30 people came. Oh well, I was just, I can never deliver a punchline. So let's go on to my next story, which has no punchline. Um, <laughs> Brunei. Or so you think. <laughs> Brunei is urged to halt the introduction of strict anti-LGBT laws. Changes would allow whipping and stoning to death yeah, for Muslims this. found guilty, guilty of adultery, sodomy, and rape. Brunei was the first East Asian country to introduce Islamic criminal law in 2014 when it announced the first of three stages of legal changes that included fines or jail time for offenses like pregnancy outside marriage or failing to pray on Friday. Previously, homosexuality was illegal in Brunei, punishable by up to 10 years imprisonment, but the changes would allow whipping and stoning to death for Muslims found guilty, guilty of adultery, sodomy, and rape. The country delayed implementing the first two stages of changes after an international backlash in 2014, but now it plans to go ahead with both on April 3rd. Uh, Manila-based Outright in Action International confirmed with other groups that Brunei was about to implement a new stage in its Sharia laws. Socially conservative attitudes prevail across Asia with Myanmar, Malaysia, Singapore, and Brunei banning sexual relationships between men, while Indonesia has seen an increase in raids targeting LGBT plus people in recent years. Brunei, a former British protectorate of about 400,000, nestled between two Malaysian states on Borneo Island, is the first country in East Asia to adopt the criminal component of Sharia on a national level. The full implementation of Sharia penal law will apply severe penalties against consensual same-sex relations, including the death penalty via stoning, said Ryan Silviero, a coordinator at a human rights caucus um, in an email. Dede Otem, Otomo, Otomo, one of Indonesia's most prominent LGBT plus activists, said it would be the, a gross violation of international human rights if the changes went ahead. It's horrible. 
Brunei is imitating the most conservative Arab states, he said. And it seems like it's going to go forward very quickly. I have one more story, if I may. Well, they can forget about tourism. The world's happiest countries protect their LGBT citizens. The World Happiness Report 2019 has been released, ranking 156 countries on how happy people living there think they are. Of the, t of the top 10 happiest countries, Nine have extensive laws and legal protections for their LGBTQ Norway. citizens. Finland mm -hmm. came in first, happiest country in the world, followed by Denmark, Norway, Iceland, the Netherlands, Switzerland, Sweden, New Zealand, Canada, and Austria. So I have more, but I think it's time to go Do to trivia. the trivia question. Where the United States? Uh, I don't think we even placed. No. It's, 19th in the world happiest country. Oh, 19th in the Spartacus Travel Index, which okay. I mentioned last time. All right. Now we'll have our trivia. So, 1988, people opposing the anti-discrimination bill based upon sexual and affectional orientation made this comment. It is well documented and well known the typical gay has 500 to 1,000 in their lifetime. And the answer would be sexual partners. There was one person testifying who actually said that it was 500 to 1,000 in a year. I, I have no comment. 500 to 1,000 in a lifetime. We need to end the show now because I'm behind on my quota. <laughs> <laughs> and with that. I am too. <laughs> I'm behind. On that note of confession, let's remember, remember to resist. resist. Thank you.